Good morning, everyone. My name is Terry Kelly, and uh, I have to give you an absolute privilege it is to be with you on this very special morning. To the, the members of our Defence Forces, veterans and sub branch members, members of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Rudy Hill RSL Centenary of Anzac Commemoration. As I said, indeed, it is a great privilege to be with you. And I just say from my perspective right here, it is a most impressive turn. So thank you very much. Well, before we begin this morning with the official proceedings, I'd like to acknowledge the Darragh people, the original custodians on, on the land on which we meet today. We pay our respect to elders past and present and acknowledge the Aboriginal people for their custodianship of this land. And today, of all days, we recognise the Indigenous servicemen who have served as members of the Australian Defence Forces. Today, as we all know, is a very significant day in the history of our great nation. 100 years ago today, around 4.30 in the morning, the first soldiers of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, Anzacs, landed on the shores of the Gallipoli Peninsula. Brave and young, the cream of Australian and New Zealand men, with thoughts of their families, their nation behind them, when they boarded 36 rowboats and under the heavy fire of Turkish troops. Above, they landed at a place we now know as Anzac Cove. On the very steep rocky slopes of Anzac Cove, and in the many, many months of bitterly fought battles that followed, these brave young soldiers 
that established her, our country, our young country, an enduring sense of national identity based on the iconic traits of nature, of courage, of compassion, and ingenuity. And it is these very traits that we recognize at this day during times of national hardship when Australians, all Australians come together to support each other during cyclones, during floods, bushfires, and haven't we seen a lot of that in times past? Today is about remembering the service and the sacrifice of members of our armed forces. Not only in the First World War, but through campaigns of Gallipoli on the Western Front and the Middle East, but in conflicts in places far from home in the past 100 years. We also acknowledge the contribution of those not only on the battle fronts, but playing an important supporting role for the troops who were, who were a long way from home. For the nurses, for the women, for the families, because we know that war is felt most deeply in the communities that are left behind. We gather this morning in darkness and pause to remember the Anzacs and the peace and the freedom their sacrifice has secured for us. We are gathered here in front of this new cenotaph for remembrance, a memorial to those lost, those known and unknown. And we will officially open this new memorial later in the proceedings. It is significant that the Rudy Hilara Cell Club is hosting Western Sydney's largest Anzac Day service to commemorate the centenary of Anzac. Not only because this is Australia's largest RSL, but also because of the significant contribution local servicemen made in the war effort. It's also significant because Australia's Prime Minister, for the majority of the First World War, with Hughes, held the seat of Voice Sydney. Earlier this week, we spoke with students from all local schools, and they told us about what Anzac Day means to them. So I invite you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to watch the next generation share their thoughts on Anzac Day on our screen.
even if we're walking out to the park when we're knowing the war zone, it isn't the real heroes of Australia. And that's the
Edmund Hill, 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 all this year, our board of services moved from our traditional uh, service at this degree. This year's new committee because we now have a new model for the new short term services. We've also marked our very first year's annual service with a self filling that material up in March and we're ready to be provided. So it's very fitting this year that we recognise our origin risk of our personal services. We meet here today to glorify war and praise its victims. But to remember those who have served our country during times of conflict, crisis, and to reflect on their senses and sacrifices. This day is based on blood, but it's celebrated by many other readers. As we stand together on this hollow ground, in this cold dark, I will know I need to be living and need to be living in this earth. I feel an overwhelming sense of pride. Pride what we've accomplished as a nation and we've great due to the sacrifice of so many. And it's so evident that around us and in more rules of our hearts and laws and conflicts. Looking out from our new world behind me are the names of faceless names of our men and women who are no longer amongst our ranks. All their own sacrifices. Men who, like their fathers, believe that our safety, our freedom, and our way of life were all worth more than their own suffering and their loss. Thank you for your time. 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 The battalion will shortly reinforce those in the next two hours on the rest of the brigade and on the first brigade. Why is there over 530 hours? Naval ship observed, train, troops, you dig in the tilt, hilly train, just moved as easy as you want. It was also observed that I'm under the devastating and angry artillery fire against the Turks. By the end of the first day, some 2,000 air attacks, train, and the sons, Laid them foreign land and left to the town. By the end of that bloody campaign, 7,600 Australians, 2,500 New Zealanders killed. Young men in the third, the first of those one year to come in on the 25th of April 1915, had no grass nor warning on the intense and deadly combat that all of them wanted to live in these shores. But the fatigue, the despair, the hardship, they were due for the key pain, or the injury to these bloody memories of the curry home with him and into their futures. Yet they made it together. They fought. They fought the spontaneous fearlessness, all those distinctive tendencies, and in grit that will come to define our Anzac spirit. An expression that touches our hearts and inspires our passions, focuses our purposes. Strength is our resolve, and better than anything else, encapsulates the very essence of our national culture and society. The war to end all wars is not to end. As the Second World War plague every country on the planet from 1939 to 1945, there was each short drive of the Korean War, and the Malaysian conflict, and the Vietnam War, the two wars in Iraq, and the war in Afghanistan. In many peace-making missions, the world is continually experienced and affect families and communities. Whilst the Anzac spirit of our first region of troops of the battlefield is indeed a life force that resides in the lives of our ancestors. We saw a shine through the plague that just days and those trials when volunteer firefighters rally all over the country and in all communities. To mobilise, look after one another, and to do what needs to be done to save lives, homes, livelihoods, and everyone out there. 
Those lost everything expressed the same spirit in their determination to start fresh. And again, the devastating floods in Queensland, where neighbours hit the streets to help each other out of our worst society. Since that day in 1915, each generation has remained to take poor step up the service of conflict, peace of evening, and in community reorganising the nation is making conditions. The men and women of this room will be proud on every occasion to serve the distinction of our allies. For the more generation, military conflict has rarely clearly defined our front or enemy, nor has it been contained in a single country or a continent. War on terrorism is war against our beliefs. The way to a widespread major is a radical way of all the is deceitfully sought from here and uncertainty in our societies with the aim of the belief to suppress and destroy. Yet the Afghanistan's campaign that has lasted 11 years and has been destroyed as long as war succeeded in the we have had our lives by our significant skills and efforts to drain the perpetrators, their manpower, their resources, funding, and of course, the folks on this world that are so And our servicemen and women, like those who have come before them, have stepped up to this task and have done what is needed to be done. Of course, this is their job, but unlike most jobs, there is day in, day out, and just a little bit of risk and sacrifice only matched by whatever they had to show These are the essential strides of the year's experts. The Royal of Honour, the Australian Memorial, bears the names of the rest of the Royal of Honour, all those of the other 2,000 Australians who have died before them, before this nation was shared. Love, work, to protect and in nature. We are forever their dead, and we always remember them. In the passing, they acquire a consciousness, a consistency that guides and reassures us through changing lives. And then there are our own, the sacrifices are different, no less. Their bodies and lives have been altered and measurable. They must help, nonetheless, live on and rebuild the sources of returning lives. There is no time to listen to consistency in their wounded. Rather, I don't think all of them, and their families, to face and overcome the challenges. It is profoundly sad that our leader of the wounded tend to be brought on, though they are vastly out of their death. There are over 155,000 wounded in the First World War alone. The war in Afghanistan is made for the wounded, but for those who have been wounded there, it will never end. The physical scars inflicted in the remaining curse in its duration is life. The other, deep and more complex, and more insidious scars in arms and minds will wreak havoc and pain over their lifetime. Ever the regrets of the season, the Indian takes root and is not least deeply and mindful every day. Courage, mateship, humour, laughter, warmth, generosity. And the determination is ever to give in before we have heard the time of us. The Anzac spirit and the values of demonstration remain our common bedrock, creed, and source of hope, and being conquered through difficult and uncertain times in our world and our communities. Times that were the only upbringing of us was the original big attacks. This is the core of its meaning to itself. With the dawn of Ray Green on Day 2015 at our new memorial, as we commemorate one of our greatest point of events as a people and a nation. And I ask each of you, all of us, to honour and to embrace your own special sense of the Anzac spirit. We are not Australians. We are born on the Anzacs. Those new Australians also are part of all the value of the Anzacs. We are the custodians and stewards of the spirit now into the future, and we must face the Thank you, Sean. And now, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker this morning, a very very good friend of the uh, Routine Alliance Self Club and of the veteran community, the member of the ship lady, the Honourable Stenia Music.
distinguished members, including our sub branch, representatives of our defense personnel, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends. With the birth of the begin, as we were born we end, remembering that the real on this day, November 25, a dedication flows with words, lest we forget, not words for their own sake, a promise to honour with no regard for time. This day, my mind turns to those who remember one because they would remember the many. They remember one 45th infantry battalion, man, man, by work, chief, and constant mystery, who were nicknamed like souvenir king, with nickel hands, who were the Lord of the Dish, while they were not on gathering all the time of the world. That pile of loot causing the fist of furious eyes to reportedly stamp proudly on this soldier's head, showing that you're truly Australian when you feel the sheer and utter delight that comes from the range of glory. As a sign that all the white and gratitude to the main comrades is infused, see it swallowed up by a mud and arrow with a bat of dirt. A frame of the later came to rest in a place equally home, but the others all are hungry. The place is formed part of the Kilmer neighbourhood with his neighbourhood. Mount Druid was home. And in the end, leaving a little behind, he sold the world of this place 57 years ago. Yet the face immortalised in some of the most famous photos of his time was to lay the grave that bore no words and no name. Today, I remember those veterans who refused to let this lapse to continue. To separated by generations, they, they did not know this man, but, but they knew what was right for him, and they determined to deliver the greatest gift you could give a fellow human dignity. The dignity that comes from the respect shown by those on the remembrance. Last September, they brought a governor to the feet of one who will be remembered. They brought a park with a name to rest on his head. Then, in the day, we will remember John Barney Hines. And we thank those veterans who remembered one, as they will remember many, many, because the one represented the many, many. And in that spirit, we reflect on the cold fact that on a single day, 100 years ago, right now, 2,000 old Australians all fell on another soil. Roughly another 7,000 was the same way over nine months the terror of the hardiest. Some of the youngest from the nation that had only just begun to behind its identity. Within that time, our own part of Sydney paid a disproportionately heavy price. So many of our young who have helped shape the face of our area were lost on that day through the war. Strange by birth or by choice, joined by a thousand of those who carried the bloodlines of the original custodians of this land who are remembered and thanked today as well. Tended to two by three thousand of those who fought to preserve the humanity of those who have the words of humanity in others. For those who did not return, bear me the realisation that they were all the chance to make a of their own. The nine opportunity to their husbands or wives they wanted to live. Unable to share the joy of being a mother or a father. No they chance to say my own sons, birthdays, anniversaries, the knowing power of our grandchildren's lives. But they gave up so much because they wanted to the rest of the world to see what our new country was made of. The pride that drove them to make those sacrifices. But they, they sacrificed all this in such a great moment as is why you. And I, millions of Australians, joined up and offer our graduates in the deepest and most profound way. We will offer thanks and thought to those who continue to serve the nation as the members of the ADF, some far from our shores, many far from their homes. Enemies have a great to pass. Honour and respect has been eternal. But to achieve this, we by those who are us, those that follow, we must be to remember. That's always been.
Thank you, Mr. Hughes. We'd now like to welcome Mr. Alan Schoen, Treasurer of the Rudy Hill Sub Ranch, to offer the program. Mr. Alan Schoen. Oh, 
Member for Chipley, the Honourable Ed Husey. 